Aloha all, and welcome back to Let's Play Mario vs. Donkey Kong. I'm Paper Mario Guy. In the last episode, we finished pretty much the majority of uh, the puzzles in, uh, or the levels in Spooky House. Um, and now we're going to be going on to the boss fight and World 5 in this video. But, you know, I was talking about The Legend of Zelda uh, Wind Waker in the last episode, and I'm going to continue that discussion, because I really just, like, I've been trying to spit this out in the, in the video for, I don't know how long now, and it's just really been annoying to me that I haven't been able to, uh, you know, get this across, um... But what I was saying in the last episode is that I consider the game kind of split into a section, kind of the way Ocarina of Time was, where you, you had the three beginning dungeons, and then at the be at the end, once you got all the three stone, spiritual stones, like in Ocarina of Time, or in the case of Wind Waker, those, um, I, I don't know what type of orbs they would be, um, but, like, you got those, and then you, um, moved on, and, and then, like, the Earth and Wind Temple would kind of be, like, the adult, um, dungeons. And, of course, uh, the game is a lot shorter than, you know, uh, um, Ocarina of Time is. But, I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, I hope you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about, uh, with the relation here. But, I mean... If you can, I can see, but that, that's the way I compare it, honestly. Um, I need to, oh, um, okay, so I need to bring these guys, okay. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of the way I compare it, um, and the thing about, uh, comparing it that way is, um, what, or, I need to do this, that's what I'm doing. There we go. Sorry about that. Just need to focus figure out what I was doing wrong, um, but yeah, and the thing with Ocarina of Time, like, the kit dungeons were really, like, inviting and everything, and they had a lot of substance to them, um, and you know, like, each one, like, you could really feel, like, with Dongo's Cavern, like, you, you knew it was, like, a cavern and everything, and you felt like the, the the rocky feeling, and there was lava and everything, and it just really worked well. And inside Lord Jabu Jabu, I mean, you were in a, you were in a fish. I mean, you, you pretty much had, you were, like, forced to feel the surroundings. And in the Great Deku Tree, like, you saw all the wood, and you saw the spider webs and all that, and that, that was, uh, pretty cool, and I thought, I thought that they really did a good job with it. And then in the Forest Temple, they stuck with that, and they did a really good job with level design and dungeon design. And with Wind Waker, you know, I just, I, I don't know, maybe I'm being too picky with my, like, my criticism, I don't know. But, like, I just didn't, I didn't feel that personally. Like, I, I definitely did not feel the same way about, um, Wind Waker as I did, like, Ocarina of Time. Oh my god, you fucking blue ghost. I was about to have a perfect run here. You see what you're doing to me? You're killing me, you're busting my balls. But that, that's honestly, the, that's probably the most disappointing thing about Wind Waker for me. It's just like, I, I, I remember Ocarina of Time, and I remember how, like, they were able to keep it, and I remember the Link to the Past, and they were able to keep it, um, all, like, pretty well together. Like, it was all pretty good. Um, even with Twilight Princess, like, that's the thing, like, I'm not a big fan of Twilight Princess, as I said in the last episode. But, you know, I could appreciate Twilight Princess level, like, dungeon design. Like, I, I thought that was, I thought they did a really good job with the dungeon design. Like, uh, graphically, that game was really solid and probably one of my personal favorites. Like, if there was one thing that I really liked about Twilight Princess, it was the atmosphere. It, really, what killed me, kind of, was the gameplay. Uh, not, not even so much the gameplay, but Twilight Princess is a whole different discussion. But it's just like Twilight Princess did such a good job, and, and Majora's Mask, the, I mean, the swamp level was pretty damn cool, uh, Snowhead felt really cool, and, uh, like, it was like a fresh, uh, a breath of fresh air. Um, the Great Bay Temple was a, a bit generic, but, you know, I still enjoyed it, um, for what it's worth. But it's just like, I think about some of the things in Wind Waker, and it's just like, I can't really justifiably say that. Like, I didn't really feel the whole earthy thing going on in the Earth Temple. I didn't really see, like, anything with the Wind Temple thus far. I could be wrong. Am I gonna make this? Please make this. Damn it! Fuck. Um. Uh, but, I don't know. 
Like that's that's, that's honestly my main my, my, uh, my main complaint. It's just the atmosphere just feels kind of dry to me. There's nothing really going on with it. Um, and you know, I mean, some people say, oh, it has excellent design, and that's I mean, I guess it's all a, a whole opinion thing. I almost did the same mistake twice. Um, but me personally, I I just I can't get into it the way I've gotten into any other Zelda game, Dungeon Guys. Musically, you know, it's pretty solid. I, I still wouldn't put it above um, any of the three games previous. Maybe over Twilight Princess, I don't know. But I mean, especially compared to, uh, like, personally, I think, like, Majora's Mask probably has my favorite overall soundtrack um, of any Zelda game. Um, so, especially compared to Majora's Mask, like, I just, I really don't, just, like, the music just doesn't compare. But even with, uh, you know, A Link to the Past or Ocarina of Time, I still think that they have, uh, a better thing. And I, I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm just bashing the game, because that's really what I am doing. But it just, I, I don't know, seven years of hype, hearing all the good things that I heard about the game, and... You know, it has some fun mechanics, but, you know, I, I just don't think it lives up to, uh, you know, um, some of the other past Zelda games. Um, I don't know. Again, all opinion. Agree or disagree, that's your choice. Um, but I'm going to step my Wind Waker discussion here, because I haven't even talked about our new world. World number five, Mythic Forest. So... Right off the bat, you saw in the first level, the main thing about this level is, um, switches. Um, switches are gonna play a huge part in here, you're gonna have to do a lot of work with, uh, keys and stuff like that. Um, and, and, and it's pretty fun, I do quite enjoy this world, I think. It, in, <laughs> you know, now that we're talking about, uh, level design and everything, I think it does ha- uh, has a pretty solid level design, and I think, uh, you know, pretty fantastic, I do quite enjoy this world. Um, I don't want to approach this. Alright, go with this. Turn around. Boom. Um, but yeah, I mean, I like the whole forest thing. The music is pretty solid in this. I, I do like the music in this level. Um, ooh. I thought I was gonna die. Um, ooh, how am I gonna work this? Uh, Alright, run. Run! <laughs> but yeah, the music of this uh, this world and the level design is pretty cool. Uh, some of the gameplay mechanics are pretty solid. I'd probably put this as maybe my... my either Actually, either my second or my my favorite level. I really do like uh, DK Jungle, though. I, I do like that. I forget what I said about it in the original. But thinking about it now, uh, I do quite enjoy DK Jungle. Alright, how am I supposed to get this? I remember I had a huge problem with this this package right here in the in my my practice run. See if I can, you know, maybe figure out what I did wrong. Oh, this this is what it is. Okay. Uh. All right. I know what I have to do. But um, I I don't even know. I might not even put this as my. S oh, oh, I need to go down here and hit the red switch. Okay, I know how I can do this. Alright. Wait a few seconds. I don't know, because I really like the last world, too. I just like the whole atmosphere of that level. Boom, there we go. This is how you do it. Uh, oh, you have to walk all the way over there. Cool. But th I'm pretty sure this is just going to be... I'm going to finish this level and cut the episode here. I'll finally have, uh, you know... No excuse to not have an upload. Uh, so, I guess that's pretty cool. Um, what am I supposed to be doing? Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, okay, I got it. Um, <laughs> yeah, this might not be the most invigorating commentary you've ever heard, but, you know, uh, I'm just kind of tired. And plus, like, once you really establish the, the uh, few things about this world, it's kind of hard to talk much more about, about like, what's kind of going on. I mean, 
there's no new mechanics. I mean, the fact that you have to like do this monkey thing, I guess, is a new mechanic. But you know, it's pretty. You've you've seen it before. Um, it's it's like. Oh, okay. I thought I was gonna miss that. Do I really have to hit the red switch? Oh my god. Right, good thing I have some extra time here. Seriously, like I'm not paying attention at all. Can I make this? Okay, I am going to see you. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna see you guys in the next episode, and we will finish the second half. I'm sorry for the boring. I really, I really am sorry for the boring commentary. I just, I don't know. I I've been in a recording mood lately. I just, you know. <laughs> I guess I haven't. Like I've been in a recording mood, but for some reason I just. My commentary has been dry. Anyway, before I ramble on and, you know, I can do cutting and editing, I'm going to end it here. Until episode number 10, I'm Paper Mario Guy. See you in the next episode.